Aloha, I'm Wendy Lowe, and I'm excited to journey with you as we learn how to take your health back. Today, we have a very dynamic woman warrior of God who was given a challenge early on in her life and who has conquered the challenge and wants to help others along the way. Her name is Becky Sampson. Becky's journey to recovery from a binge disorder and into reversing every medical condition she had, overcoming self-esteem issues and learning to love and honor the woman that she has now become. Let's welcome Becky Sampson. Aloha, Becky. Aloha. Wendy, wow. thank you so much. <laughs> well, when I met you, I, I knew I had to have you on the show. You have an amazing story and I'm sure one that many of us can resonate with and still probably dealing with. So I want to get us started so you can give us some direction, some goals, and what to look forward to in life. So thank you for being here, Becky. <laughs> sure. Thank you so much, Wendy. And, and you too are adorable. <laughs> I actually, you were one of the first people that I, when I was looking at Think Tech Hawaii, you were one of the first people that I saw on there. Oh. So I recognized you um, when we met again about a month or two ago. So thank oh, you wow. so much. Very good. Thank um, you, Becky. So yeah. I just want to know, how did you do it? I mean, we're going to see some amazing pictures, some photos of you, and I'm glad that you're sharing them. I would be so proud to share them as well. How did you do it? And how do you do it? <laughs> yeah, that's a really, really great question because uh, I've struggled my entire life with weight, uh, issues with weight, as many people can relate to. I know that it's a difficult thing for a lot of us. Um, and for my journey with eating, overeating and binging started when I was about seven or eight years old. I think there was just a lot going on in my life and uh, food was what I chose to go to. That was my go-to thing to dealing with my emotions. And um many, many years of it going up and down the scales. And as I always say, it's when my weight went up, my self-esteem went down. Right. So, right. <laughs> and you know, I'd have a little bit of successes. I'd try different things and my weight would go down and I'd feel a little bit more confident about myself. And then I'd slip off the rails and, and go back to that cycle, um, go back to what I was, what I knew and felt was familiar to me. Um, so that was kind of my journey all the way through high school, all the way um, until a friend of mine uh, and I were walking one morning in a mall and she's this four foot 11 Filipino, 83 years old now. Um, and she was 130 pounds overweight. And she turned to me and she goes, Becky, this was a Thursday. And she says, um, I have eaten four cookies and I need a detox. And I, at the time I was 266 pounds. So I was my heaviest weight. And, um, she's like, I need a detox. And there's a conference down in Vegas. And I was like, and she goes, I need to go come with me. And I was like, what? You're so crazy. You know, like four, co four cookies is nothing compared to <laughs> yeah, what I can nothing. pound down, you know? <laughs> and, uh, so anyway, we went walking the next morning and I didn't really think she was serious, but she, at that point said to me, she goes, Becky, really seriously, we need to go. We need to leave within an hour. And I was like, what? Like I have to work. And, um, she goes, you're, you're the boss call off work. Let's go. So I did. I, I went to work that day on a Friday and said, I'm sorry, my friend has some weird thing. I don't know. She needs to go down to Vegas, which is a five hour drive. And we jumped in the car and we walked into this room. We were late and we walked in this room and the woman at the front of the room was telling her story. And I remember as she was telling her story, I turned as I was registering my name for the event, I turned up and looked at her and I said, she's telling my story. And who are these crazy people? And uh, this room was full of people who had been in recovery from food addiction and had been had success and kept their weight off, lost a bunch of weight, but also kept it off for many years, which was something I never could do. And so story after story after story, these, these women and men would share their stories. And I was like, I don't know what this is. Like, I, I, I just came to support my friend, but I know that I, I want to start. And, um, and I turned to my friend, I said, I need to start right, right now. And she goes, no, 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 no. You'll know when you're ready. And I'm like, no, no, right now. Do you understand? Yeah. Like I'm compulsive. Like I need to start right now. Wow. And, um, 
I found out that it was later, I found the person that lost the most amount of weight. She had lost 200 pounds and I thought you're going to have to beat it out of me. And she goes, Becky, that's not how this program works. And, uh, I started working with a sponsor, which, you know, it's, it's totally free program. And, uh, she offered to take me on as a sponsee and, uh, 14 months later, of course it's a journey. It's not perfect, but 14 months later, I released 130 pounds and have been a part of recovery for the last, I think that's now 12 and a half years since that day back in 2009. Wow. Congratulations. Yeah. And so can you mention the name of your Filipino friend that dragged you along? <laughs> I actually can't because it's anonymity, oh. right? So it's okay, 12 got steps. It, got it, got it. Yeah, okay. but she's okay. one of my dearest friends. And oh. still to this day, she, I, I told her all the time, I said, I swear I'm speaking at your funeral, whether you like it or not, <laughs> because I, you've changed my life. You introduced wow. me to something that, and wow. she, by the way, went on to lose 130 pounds as well. So, uh, and if you see us, she's this little short thing and I'm tall, I'm five, seven. <laughs> So it's kind of a funny, kind of a funny thing. Wow. But. You know, we all need a buddy. I'm going to talk about that yeah. later. We all need a buddy and you were her buddy and she was your buddy. And so Absolutely. together, uh, I don't know how well you would have done. Well, you wouldn't have known about it without her. So touche for yeah. her for dragging you along <laughs> and for you to go and then for you to have your eyes and heart wide open to yeah. receive the information that you will make a change. And that's what to me success is all about. Success is not just being at the right place at the right time, which you were, but mm -hmm. success is being at the right place at the right time and taking action, which you both did. And so you know, and I'm really, really glad that you said that because I always say to people when they come to me, well, Becky, I've never lost my weight or I've never had real long-term success. Mm -hmm. And I always say, well, you just haven't lost your weight yet. Yes. And the yet is holding up the hope that, you know, let's just try one more time, one more time. What if I had said no to her that day? What yeah. if I had not been in that room and said, you know what? I know this works for everybody else, but it doesn't work for me. I didn't even know what it was. Right. All I knew is my heart was open. And I love that you brought that up. And I took action and I just did it one day at a time, exactly. one day. So uh, touche for you, you both actually. Wow. <laughs> So, you know, we have a slide of you and in this next slide, you don't look too happy. So please share with us, what were you feeling here in this photo? Yeah, you know, this is, this is um, it's still to this day, people ask me, you know, what do you think about when you look at, you know, who you were before? And I, I struggled to be honest with you for a really long time, looking at, at that girl and that woman, because there was a lot of pain. There was a lot of, um, I felt a lot of bondage. I felt completely out of control. I had a lot of anger. I had an anger and resentment towards myself. Um, and of course I had failed so many times. So of course there's a lot of beating myself up, feeling like I'm never going to be successful. And so I look at that woman now today, 12 and a half years later, and I honor her because she brought me to the place that I'm at now. Right. I had to go through all of that garbage um, in order to get to where I am today. And, you know, everybody has their weakness. I, you know, I, I personally don't like to use the word addiction because addiction people categorize, you know, oh, I'm not an addict or whatever, but we all have stuff that we struggle with. We all have weakness. And that happened to be the weakness that I, um, that I ended up with when I was very young and it was hard for me to shake that. Um, but the one thing that really made the difference is I found a program that I really didn't really honestly see the power of using God in it. And once I found a program that included God or your higher power or whatever it was, now I could really plug into literally something way beyond me to be able to overcome something that I've never been able to do by myself. And that is a very much a 12 step thing is, you know, let God do what I can't do for myself. And that's exactly what I did. I had to learn how to let go and let God. Well, you had two buddies with you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the good thing is you recognize them and then you grab their hands and you journey together. And so yeah. that's the whole success is um, having somebody that you were accountable to, 
and making sure that you took one next step right in front of the next step. And mm -hmm. that's where you are today, 12 years later. And so, wow, what an amazing journey. And so for many of our viewers who are not taking that first step yet, I'm hoping and praying that their hearts will be open to hearing your heart to guide mm -hmm. them through their um, recovery and to their, the, the, where God really brought them to so they can max out their lives. So Absolutely. I know that you're, you're, did that trip to, to San Diego, to Vegas, you're all up in the mainland. And I know you wanted to plan a trip to Hawaii. And what was your goal when you were planning that trip? You had a goal in mind. And did you reach your goal before coming to Hawaii? Yeah, you know, that's a that's a great question. I, I think people that struggle with their weight, right, we're constantly setting goals for ourselves and then failing at reaching them. And I swore when I was really young because my family uh, didn't travel a lot when I was a kid. And so Hawaii was like this really big, huge reward for myself. And I was always my goal that if I went to Hawaii, I was going to be at my goal weight, right? I was going to be able to wear a swimsuit and feel good about it. Cause that's something that I had never felt like I could ever achieve. And in 2006 was the first time I came to Hawaii. And I think you guys have a picture of that. Um, but that was, I obviously it was at my heaviest weight, which is ironic because now living in Hawaii, I met my goal weight, but that first time I came here, um, I was very disappointed in myself. You know, I felt like I couldn't really enjoy it to the full extent that I wanted to because of how I felt inside. And that was just something I was talking to someone the other day. She says, you know, culturally, a lot of the Polynesian cultures, you know, they wear full clothes going into into the into the water. And I wear I just wear my you know, swim, normal swimsuit. And I said to her, I said, you know, I think the reason why I do is because I finally feel confident in myself. You know, I don't have to carry around the shame that I feel anymore. I'm, I honor the journey that I've been on with God and I honor the woman that I've become. Um, but I can relate very much. So is setting goals and not achieving them, but that still doesn't have to stop you from setting another goal and having it yet, right? The yet, maybe you're just not there yet. Right. So keep setting the goals is really my point with that. Wow. And what a, what a purpose filled life you have now. Um, in the beginning, you just, you were like in a turmoil, you were considered your, you considered yourself in a mess, but God mm -hmm. gave you that mess to make it your message. Exactly. And where if you weren't there before and have that struggle and that journey to get to where you are today, what would you be doing today? I mean, now you have such a, a, a purpose filled life and and thriving and the glow within you comes out and that's why you were on that journey and you struggled and the struggle made you stronger and more aware of the issues of the day for many many of us so thank you for pursuing the journey and being so successful at what you're doing yeah. and sharing the secret or the message behind what we need to do to accomplish our goals right so well, and to to be honest with you Wendy I honestly I believe one of the secret sauces to keeping your success is to give it away. You can't keep what you don't give away. If that one woman had not told her story that day, mm -hmm. then I would not have been inspired to do it. There's two reasons why people change. One is because they get so sick and tired of being sick and tired, mm -hmm. right? Of where they're at or they see themselves in someone else's story. So to be honest with you, I could care less if I ever told my story again, because my weight loss story doesn't define me, but I know that there's people that are still out there struggling and they don't think that there's a solution. That's, right. that's the thing that keeps me awake at night and keeps me on these shows and keeps me out in the public and keeps doing the work that I'm doing is because I was so excited to have finally found something that, that helped me get out of my head and into my heart in loving myself, but also learning to love others as well. And being able to have this relationship with God that I've never really been able to have before because the food was standing in the way between me and God and success. And I needed to get the food out of the way. And so I really believe that we, I am going to keep it the more that I share and help other people because I wish I would have known about this earlier, but I also believe that everything happens 
for a reason and timing, right? Like right. it happened in the right time for me, but there's so many people that come into this program that, that are like, oh, I wish I would have known this 30 years ago. You know, like, no, you're, it, it is just right here. It, this is the yet moment. This is your yet moment. Yes. Wow. Yeah. You know, um, I have to ask you a question. There's a question here from the viewers yeah. and it's, they're asking you, did you have any support groups that held you accountable through the, from the beginning to where you ended up at your goal? Absolutely. 110% in this, that was one of the things that I had tried losing weight on my own. Um, this 12 step program that I work is every single person in the program has a sponsor. Okay. So that what that means is that I call someone every day. I have, not only do I have one person that I talk to every day, just for a, a little bit, 10 minutes, 15, sometimes it's five minutes just to touch bases, right. To get out of isolation and to be accountable. But I also have meetings that I go to, which is larger group. And now because of zoom, we have people from all over the world that come on these meetings. And so when I came to Hawaii, uh, we actually, when we started this 12 years ago, we started it in Utah and we now have, I think there's eight meetings, maybe even more. And there's 150 people doing it there. Wow. And here, uh, we started with one meeting. We had three, we went and now we're down to two, but, uh, we've got a bunch of us here in the islands, but you don't need, there's people from all over the world. My sponsor is not here it's somewhere. There's somewhere else. So yeah, absolutely. Support is bar none. The most, one of the most important factors in, and this applies to anything in life, by the way, if you want right. anything, get an accountability partner, a good accountability partner that yeah. you, that you can be accountable to, to get that success. Wow. I'm so excited to meet more of the people as I venture into your programs and see, uh, actually talk about something. We have a surprise at the end uh, where people can actually get more information and, and go mm -hmm. through the journey as you did. So I know you want to keep that to the end. But uh, in your next slide, you have your finger pointing up. What was the significance about this day and your finger pointing up the number one? <laughs> So first of all, I, I wore the wrong shoes that day. I remember thinking, <laughs> oh my gosh, those are my clogs. Um, but that was the first day that I got into program and into recovery. That was, that was the moment, like moments after I said to my girlfriend, I don't know what this is. I just know I need to start it. And that was outside of the hotel in Las Vegas. And I always hold that, you know, that picture close to me because that reminds me of that moment that, I didn't know what I didn't know moments before that. And then all of a sudden that was the first day of my journey. Um, and it is a journey. It's not perfect. I am never going to say to them, Oh, you just lose 130 pounds. Cause you had mentioned before, you know, sometimes it's one journey to lose the weight. Right. And you're getting a lot of accolades from everybody. Oh my gosh, you look amazing, but it's a whole other journey to maintain yeah. it. Yes. And that's just, and the way that I do that is just with the one day at a time mentality. Like, I can't think about what I'm going to do tomorrow. I just, for today, I have a program and today I'm going to stick to it. I don't know. Tomorrow I'll wake up and make another decision, but I oh, won't just for today, just for today. I can, and that's how I've been successful for 12 and a half years. Wow. So that's the secret, right? There are a couple of um, gems that you're nuggets. giving out. Yeah, these golden nuggets. First, find a buddy. I mean, Oh, I mean, mm -hmm. just what a journey that you've been on. You've come a long way. And, you know, I, I so resonate with what you're saying. Um, I work with a company and my president um, of the Juice Plus companies, Jay Martin, he always will tell us, find a buddy. And yep. so from the very get-go, you find a buddy. If you're blessed, you find a couple of buddies that hold you accountable, that will hold you up, and you will hold them up and journey together. And, I mean, just being accountable and uh, when you feel that weak moment where you're reaching for something that you shouldn't and by chance or it's a God thing, the phone rings and say, hey, put that donut down or put that third donut down, Wendy. Um, we, we can do this. So all of yes. these are so, such gems that we all need. Even as adults, we need we need this accountability and just the feeling that someone cares and is supporting me all the way. So. Well, and the thing is, is it's got to be an, an internal thing, right? Like, I mean, I have an accountability partner that I speak with every morning on Zoom for 15 minutes with my business, right? This is what I'm committed to doing. And this is what I did yesterday. Here's my wins. Here's my successes. You know, here's my declaration. So I don't just apply this to my personal 
food program. And I seriously, I apply it to all the different aspects to, the, to my life and business coaching as well. So if you want something, but I always say the accountability partner, it's not their job to do it for you. No. It's your job. Like if I'm somebody else's accountability, I always tell them I'm not chasing you. Mm -hmm. I don't have the energy and the time to chase you, but I will be here. And if you, when you call and I always say call on time and I do, I sponsor several people in this program and wow. they're really good. They honor my time. They get on, they do what they need to do and they get off and we touch base and, and it, and it works. It really works. And that's the thing is, is if you can learn that if you're trying to do it on your own, it, it we, we talk ourselves out of things all the time. But if we have somebody in our lives that is willing to do that for us and we're willing to do it for them. Yeah. It's just, it's magic. It's a, it's a, it's literally magic. Yeah, it works. I know. And I know that you've come up with, come up with a way to give support to all in need of your experience and knowledge. You've created an audio. I think it's called sabotage buster. Mm -hmm. And that will be a buddy 24 seven to so many. So please tell us about the sabotage buster. Yeah. So you can go to my website, creatinghealthyliving.com. And on there, if you click on free, um, you can download this. This is called 11 sabotage busters. So these are the things that we tell ourselves, right? Like that really gets stuck. You know, if something comes up and we, we tell ourselves, uh, the stories that we tell ourselves and I give, and every single one of these sabotage, uh, ways that we sabotage ourselves, I give you nuggets or things that I have done that have helped me kind of burst through that. Now, I don't recommend that you do all of them. I always recommend that you just like pick one or two that are like, that's totally the, my go-to sabotage. Um, and, and then work on that just one day at a time, just say, you know, I'm going to work on that. I'm going to implement that tool and uh, work to improve every single day. You just need 1% of improvement, right? And if you have a bad day, shake it off and step up and keep going. So yeah, that's, that's definitely a free gift that I can give to you, to everybody. So wow. that's awesome. Did you say a free gift? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> wow, what a blessing. I mean, I know you've been blessed and so you're turning it around and paying it forward mm -hmm. by blessing so many with all your great experiences, your, your nuggets and... Um, yeah, so thank you. Thank you You're so much, welcome. Becky, for having that heart and the servant's heart to share and give. And it does take work on your part to continue mm -hmm. to be a sponsor or, a, mm -hmm. you know, and to continue to serve in that regard. So I know that your life will be continued, continually blessed as you bless others. So thank you so much. You know, um, as I was growing up, um, I always had an insatiable appetite myself and I, and it was beyond binge eating. I just could not get full. Uh, and I would just eat everything in sight. And the joke is that when I was a, in dating age, I used to have dinner at home with my family before my date picked me up because I would be so embarrassed that um, he would think he couldn't afford me <laughs> because I, when I ate one dinner, it wasn't enough. I needed to have at least two or three and um, then I would be okay. And so if I went on a date without eating before I went, I'd be starving and I wouldn't be happy. And so mm -hmm. I would always make it a point to eat and eat and then get picked up and then go on the date. And then as my life uh, became more professional and I was very busily sitting on you know, different boards at, I, at one time, um, I would have two or three lunches and two or three dinners and I was the happiest girl ever. And the weight kept coming on and on. And in my forties, I was praying, I said, hey God, I need to, I need to get this under control. And for my situation, I think it was a medical issue that was going wrong with me because I was a heart patient. I had been under a lot of antibiotics. Mm. And so the antibiotics did some, you know, it tweaked my body in a different way. And so it, it kind of damaged some signals. And so that's why the appetite was never satisfied. And so mm. understanding my problem and just talking to myself all the time and praying for help, um, it helped with me. Uh, and then I surrounded myself with more people like you, more mm -hmm. like-minded people that were on a journey to, you know, uh, just steward their bodies the way God intended us to. And that has been my buddy and my secret to my success all this time. And now that I find you, <laughs> I'm going to jump on, on board and, and learn more of the sabotage buster secrets and tips and, and follow you from there on, if you don't mind. Oh, absolutely. I look, I look, that's what I always say is I'm from heaven and I work for God. So, you know, whoever, 
God puts in my way, in my path. And, and by the way, I mean, whoever he puts in front of me, I'm going to finish my thought there is I'm just going to serve them. Right. Cause again, if I have the mentality that the more you give, you know, the more I receive. And so I do just keep giving it away, just keep giving it away. And I'm, I, through the service, you know, for taking my phone calls in the morning from the ladies that I work with, um, you know, they inspire me every single day. They keep me going. The meetings keep me going, keeping connected to recovery keeps me going. And, uh, oftentimes I get more from the call than, than I give to them. Right. Exactly. So, and again, again, it's all free. That's the thing is that we, de we don't get paid for what we do in this particular, um, program just because it's a community service. Wow. Yeah. That's very important, especially in times as we are in now, where it's mm -hmm. full of darkness, you bring the light to a lot mm -hmm. of people who, who didn't have a way to find an answer or a resource. And so I'm, I'm praying that the one that needs to hear your talk and your story will be listening and that they can find the answers through you and your, your outreach of, of love. I'm just praying for that right now. Absolutely. That, yeah. So that would be so wonderful. And I, I know, I know that you want to reach more people. And I know that you have a great retreat that you've been working so hard on. And I think it's scheduled for sometime in May of 2022. Mm -hmm. So please let the cat out of the bag and share some details about this amazing retreat. Yeah, this is, you know, since I came to the island uh, about almost three years ago, um, I, I really have wanted to serve as many people as I can. And I had this idea that the, about a year ago of putting on a retreat and having people come here and be exposed to what recovery looks like. So I have a partner over in the Maui uh, island and we put this together for next May. We, I, I looked for a venue specifically that was going to be big enough for me to be able to do an outreach uh, meeting. So we're going to have an open meeting for the community. So anyone that's interested, uh, that's going to be on the 5th of May. So the evening of the 5th, and we're on the North shore in Haula, and this is a wedding venue. So this is a really, really beautiful <laughs> place. So if you want to go to ceahawaii.com, it will tell you if you want to come as a participant come for the four days. It's, it's all inclusive. We're going to be doing all really good, healthy food, but people are coming from all over the world for this. Oh. Or if you want to just come for a day thing, then you can come for the day and the foods included in that and the activities included it. But the big thing is, is that it, we're going to be opening it up for Thursday night on the fifth for a community service. So for you to come and meet other people who have had a lot of success in this program and uh, long-term success, right? We can all lose weight, but it's the recovery right. from the thoughts, the negative thoughts that we have, the, the, the negative thoughts that we have about ourselves and around food. Like I call it the emotional hunger versus the physical hunger. There's two different things, that, you know, learning about that and allowing, having the help of God in a spiritual program help you heal from uh, your struggles from wow. the food, basically. Wow. Well, Becky, we'll have to leave it there for now. You've been watching Taking Your Health Back on Think Tech Hawaii, and we just want to say mahalo to you, Becky Sampson, life oh, and you. business uh, leadership coach, which you are wonderful at and you're calling and you've met it. Thank you for talking story with us and for, for sharing your gift of health from the North Shore of Hawaii. I look forward to attending your retreat in May of 2022. And mahalo to all of our viewers for watching. I'm mahalo. Wendy Lowe. We'll be back in two weeks with another edition of Taking Your Health Back. So aloha for now and mahalo to you, Becky Sampson. Aloha.